All right, today we have a spine chilling treat for all you Snapchat enthusiasts out there. I know there's lots of you. Hey there, I'm Taylor, your casual crib keeper, and I have something for you today. As we embark into a journey into the realm of the unknown, as I bring you the top five scary true Snapchat stories. From haunted filters to mysterious senders, these bone chilling tales will make you think twice before opening that snap. So grab your phone and be prepared to be both captivated and terrified by these real life encounters with the supernatural on everyone's third favorite social media app. Get ready, because these stories are gonna keep you up and break your snap streak. Let me know down below which of these stories shocked you the most. Let's dive right into it. Number five. Our first story was shared to Reddit by a user named Girl Porker, and it's a story that'll have you uninstalling Snapchat if you haven't already. One day, Porker received a message from a contact that he didn't recognize. The snaps were innocuous enough, you know, a little, hey, how are you? So he assumed it was a friend messing with him on a new account that he didn't know about. The account told him he should try out a new Snapchat lens called Eyes of the Underworld, which shows you the other world hiding beneath our own. Porker installed the lens and ran it through a bit, describing the lens as a pretty simple effect, saying it just distorts whatever is on screen and adds a few flickering sprites and shadow effects to the background to give off ghostly vibe. Porker assumed it was just, I don't know, marketing stunt for something, advertising something. But Porker said that a few days after, however, he'd noticed that he was sleeping a lot worse than he ever had in his life. Complaining that he was having these violent, turbulent dreams where he was being pursued by shadowy figures that dragged themselves across the floor. This recurring dream happened to him three or four times. He said the dreams were stressing him, but what was really scaring him was how when he woke up, he would notice he had scratches and bruises that he couldn't explain appearing all over him. Porker said he was definitely getting scared and even considered looking into finding an exorcist just in case what he was dealing with was a true supernatural threat, which understandable. I think if I woke up with scratches all over me, I'd assume demons were involved or my cats. Porker smudged his house with sage and attempted to clean his house, but said that this only made things worse. And he started to hear growling late at night and experiencing intense bouts of cold sweats. And in extreme action, Porker destroyed his phone. He filled it to bursting with orange juice to fry the components and hucked it into a river to free himself. Miraculously though, it seemed to work. Porker said that after that, the nightmares stopped as quick as they began, and all it cost him was a new phone. I would have tried a factory reset personally before chucking it into the water, but hey, we all have our methods. I don't think a ghost can survive a factory reset. And hey, if you're looking for more ghost stories about creepy technology and all sorts of twisted things out there, Top 5 Scary has all of that and then some. If ghosts aren't your jam, we got aliens, we got cryptids, we got conspiracies, we got true crime, we got fake crime. Basically, if it freaks you out, we got a video or two on it. So hit subscribe, please make sure to hit that little bell as well, and I know this is a big ask, would you kindly do that at the end of this video? Because I got four more scary Snapchat stories for you coming up right now. Number four, the AI. This story was posted to Reddit as well. Recently, there was a new feature on Snapchat, which was that there was an AI that can talk to you. One day, I was in bed asking it absurd questions. Are you human? What is God to you? <laughs> That's a very esoteric, absurd question to ask an AI. What is God to you? That is poetic, that's beautiful. It started to say, I'm sorry, I don't have access to this. I don't know where you are in messages saying, it's just an AI and can't answer those questions. Can any of us answer what God is to us? I, hard to ask an AI that. I had an idea to ask it to give me a location nearby. I sent that message knowing it was going to say it doesn't have access to where I live and yada yada yada. Here's a random location near you. It was a random set of coordinates. I copy and pasted the coordinates and I was shocked and confused that it was a field in Nebraska, my home state. I asked how it knew my state, but it said it didn't have access to my location. Days pass and I become bored of the AI, but the thoughts of these coordinates stuck with me for a few days until I knew I had to find the location. On a Saturday when I was off, I drove up to the location. I put the coordinates into Waze and drove where it told me to. And this location was in the middle of nowhere. I stepped out and followed my phone and I was in a plain field with absolutely nothing. No houses, no buildings, no one. I looked into the distance and saw a small hill not too tall and I I thought that had to be it. As I walked towards it, I asked myself, was I expecting gold or cash? I felt embarrassed of all the time I was wasting here. I began to walk back until I heard faint cat noises meowing. 
I turned behind and was shocked and I walked back to a tunnel. This tunnel was covered in graffiti and it was too dark to see so I shot my phone's flashlight. Right in front of me was a long, fleshy, skinless creature. It didn't look like it had eyes but its mouth was a nightmare. It had rusted teeth and fingernails and it stood there with its arm mangled. I ran back to the car. The next few days I couldn't sleep. I messaged the Snapchat team about finding illegal stuff but I knew no one would believe me. I was so confused about how the AI gave me coordinates there. I tried to forget all about it until the next few weeks I started to see talk around town about missing construction workers all near a sewer. Blew. Number 3. The Stalker Michael Melanson is a former marine and foster parent living in a small community in California called Kings Canyon. While checking his Snapchat messages, Melanson noticed something unsettling. Among these usual snaps was one that stood out from an unrecognized username. Intrigued, Melanson opened the snaps unsure what to expect. What he saw made this fully trained marine chill. The message was a picture of Melanson with an unnerving caption saying, See you soon. More pictures would get sent showing places on Melanson's daily routine. His gym, his favorite coffee shop, a close up picture of the street sign where he lived. I would probably block that guy and actually chuck my phone into the river. I think that guy from two points ago had the right idea. But Melanson reached out to the authorities. It seemed like the Marine had a stalker. The police had advised him to save and document all of the messages as evidence and they launched an investigation, although little came of it. Surprise, surprise. The snaps continued and grew more invasive. More photos of the neighborhood and frequent hotspots. It reached its peak when one of the photos was that of Michael inside his own home. Michael then fitted his house with security cameras and confided with friends about what was happening. He became hyper aware of his surroundings, constantly pinging and scanning for any threats. The stalker seemed to have calmed down and the messages were dwindling out. Was it over? Mm, if only. Eventually, the police were able to track the IP to a location nearby. The subject was a disturbed individual with a fascination with Melanson, a young man by the name of Riley Poeta, who worked at the bowling alley Melanson lived below and frequented and did most of his business in. He was taken in. The story is a modern day horror movie plot, a reminder that not everyone in your neighborhood is as friendly as you might want them to be, and with the right information, anyone can get a hold of you. Truly spine chilling stuff. Number two, Thomas Sparks. Thomas Sparks was an amateur athlete who used his Snapchat mostly to highlight his athletics and daily vlogs about his life. A gymnast trying to attain as many world records as he could. And he might have broken the record for most haunted Snapchat story out there. Dubious one. Listen to the story he posted to Reddit. One day while browsing the app, Sparks uncovered a filter he hadn't seen advertised anywhere, which allegedly would show supernatural entities on camera. A joke, obviously, just meant for fun, sounds fun. Sparks uploaded a few videos showing off the filter, thinking it nothing more than a game. But as the days went on, Sparks noticed that even when he wasn't using his phone at all, he would occasionally catch glimpses of ghostly figures in his vision, vanishing when he tried to meet them head on. Sparks attributed it to working out maybe a little bit too hard and not getting enough rest and not drinking enough water. Stay hydrated. If you learn anything from Top 5 Scary, stay hydrated. Sparks said that after about a week after installing the filter, he began hearing faint whispers when he was alone in his bedroom and even reported that some objects seemingly were moving on their own. A lamp moved across his bedroom, things not being where he'd left it. Sparks was growing incredibly paranoid, I think as most of us would be if we invited a ghost into our home. Thomas contacted Snapchat support, but unsurprisingly, he, they didn't have much to offer for him, instead only giving a generic message stating that the filter is just a playful feature and the company doesn't take any responsibility for any paranormal hauntings that could occur as a side effect. Well, they probably didn't say that, but hey, have you ever read all of Snapchat's terms and conditions? That might be in there. Nobody's gonna sit down and read all that. They might have something about ghosts. Out of ideas, Sparks deleted the app from his phone and claimed that he'd stopped experiencing any of the paranormal activity that was bugging him before and has since not used the app whatsoever. What do you think gang? Was Sparks telling the truth? Did he unintentionally become a conduit for spiritual activity? Or is he taking home a gold medal for creative storytelling? You tell us. Also shout out to this guy just deleting the app. Everybody else went through all this like hullabaloo but he was the only guy who just figured out like oh yeah I'll just get rid of this. <laughs> Seems way easier than anything else. And finally, number one. Snapchat stories can be a very mixed bag. There's good odds most of what you'll see is just sponsored junk, ads for IGN, models doing their thing, you know. But every now and then you come across something that catches your eye and hooks you in. 
maybe too far. That's what happened to James Brett Varney, an educator from Moncton, New Brunswick. Varney reportedly while scrolling through stories clicked on one from a profile he hadn't heard of called Unknown Realms. The story in question was a series of random, quickly edited unsettling videos. Cryptic symbols, unintelligible writing and sounds, and quick flashes of people in dark robes surrounded by candles and ominous objects looking like a deleted scene out of Eyes Wide Shut. Varney was naturally unnerved by what he had seen, but brushed it off. Off, assuming it was probably just, you know, promo for some sleeper indie horror A24 hit that your friends are all gonna say is really good, but you're never actually gonna watch. As time went on, though, Varney found himself thinking more and more about the flashing images, saying that it felt like it was a dream replaying in his head over and over, and it was bothering him infinitely more than some stupid little Snapchat story should. He kept coming back to it to watch it over and over again to see if there was anything he missed. He said he felt like it was an invitation to some call. He researched Unknown Realms for a bit, but wasn't finding anything to attach it. No project, no movie, no video game. James went to report the story to the authorities to see if they'd help him, but found that when he did, the video had been scrubbed from the app. Confused, James went on to research more into the phenomena, and found others online who claimed to have all seen the same mysterious story. No one was able to get to the bottom of it. Recruitment tool for a clandestine organization? Art project by some bored art majors? We might never know. A reminder that there is so much hiding on the boundless wild west of cyberspace we may never get the answers to. And you know what? That's not such a bad thing. Sometimes some stories are better left untold, some snaps better left unopened. And that's about all she wrote for this one, my ghouls and goblins. Creep on creeping on, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Sorry. Today we have a